Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhaira Bagga and today I'll be playing the Feynman Blitz on Lee Chess and I'll try to be as instructive as possible during the game and try to explain all the lines possible during the game as well as post-match analysis. We'll do a thorough analysis of the game, making sure that we understand the lines of the computer as well. What could have been uh, a better way to play from uh, certain positions. Before we start off with the game, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily. So yeah, let's start off with the game. Got the black pieces here. I'll play c65. It is playing a different kind of an opening, I would say. Generally, you don't encounter such openings. I'll just try to play solid. Not going to attack. Now probably uh, the Dax for Bishop generally comes out on the D6, but here uh, it is standing against the pawn chain. So I would rather develop it to B4 this time. Okay, we can step just try to maintain the pin and probably proceed with the knight development knight looks good to me on c6 here he castles and so do we so both the sides have developed the minor pieces this dark square bishop is a bit uh, inactive there for my opponent you will have to find a good square for it uh, if I take on the knight, he can probably take back with the pawn and that maintains his pawn structure in the center. So I'll try to avoid that. Uh, how should we proceed from here? I think I can go ahead with the knight exchange. Or I could have centralized my rook first. Okay, he takes. Uh, now I can take back with the bishop. His light square bishop is a defender of the king's side, so I want to remove it. And that's why he doesn't want to remove it, so he denies the exchange. I bring back the rook of the bishop. He takes. Now I can open up any of the files. I think f file can be opened up straight away. That helps. Let's open up the f file. Uh, now it's sort of a close situation. I think uh, the knight should be helpful. But before developing the knight, I would like to bring on the rook on c8 and bring back the bishop on a central position to d6. He will probably try to exchange the bishops now, which we should be okay with. I'll bring back the knight trying to root it gives a good square you know attacking e3 for now which probably he will defend if he does what's the follow-up from here Should probably consider on aligning the rooks as well. Oh, uh, is that a mistake? No, it's not. Because if I take on, he takes the pawn and that gives a check as well. So I think it's a chance to probably get the queen on an active square as well. That was a nice move from his side. Generally, he could have easily defended the pawn, but he left it open. Nice move. I can probably push the queen from here by moving the knight. Have to be a bit careful here because the queen is on the diagonal to, with the bishop. So, have to be a bit, bit careful with that. 
he goes queen back probably i can also uh is there some active square for the queen here i'll just remove it from the diagonal okay he's trying to open up things because of course he has rook aligned in the center of course if he takes that's a problem so i have to take here no other option he takes with the rook i should be getting my knight back to the central square he can be doubling up his attack oh he pushes the pawn forward that creates some diagonal threats for the bishop as well probably now just move the queen away from here looks a good square i can take on the queen if he exchange, if he wants to exchange uh the knight is now hoping in to come on e3 tricky game have to be a bit faster as well on the clock okay he takes knight jumps in this time it's defended with the bishop if he takes with the rook so better position of the knight despite that he takes i take back attacking the bishop i'll bring back or just plant a rook behind now let's bring back safer option don't do anything silly when you're ahead in the game that's an isolated pawn so should not be much of a problem let's put rook in front of the bishop He pushes the pawn forward. Rook to c6. Oh, I left the rook. It's okay. I can take. How is he saving this game? I think it's mate. Only queen can come in between now. And he resigns. Yep. He tried to turn it from there. I have not played the rook maybe. But yeah. Good enough at the end. So yeah, let's analyze the game quickly once. Yeah, this rook move was bad. Apart from that, I think the game was pretty solid. Uh, we started off with we started with c4 uh, and I responded with c6. So whenever I'm playing black, I'll play c6, d5. That's the standard opening I use. He played knight to c3. It's kind of a old Sicilian setup from uh, from white, I would say. Generally, black plays like that. And then uh, I play d5, he takes, I take back. Changes happen uh, of the, for the pawn, then he plays d4. Then I develop the knight to f6, defending the pawn. He plays g3, trying to develop his bishop from, uh, from g2, and probably the knight to f3, and then castle, a solid structure. I develop my bishop on f5, he brings the bishop to g2 now pawn e6 he plays center pawn to e3 now as i explained in the game uh generally the that's where bishop comes on the d6 in these kind of setups but since it's against a pawn, pawn chain and won't be very effective i use it to pin the knight he brings the knight to e2 i develop the knight on c6 the right square for the knight that's kind of a basic development structure that you are looking forward to Development is, of course, not complete yet because casting is pending, but 
that's how your setup uh, setup should be and probably it's controlling everything you develop the minor pieces uh, properly and if you see there is no slight advantage to black here as per the evaluation bar so uh, you're doing good in development e castles and so do i and now the development is stage is done uh, so opening has been played pretty fine that's the whole part of learning about opening and working on it so that's done one part and now we move on to the middle game and he starts off with knight to f4 yeah i was thinking in the game as well to bring my rook to c8 first because uh, it's an open file so always helpful but i played knight to e4 he captures i take back and then he plays f3 now playing f3 is really weakens up your king side uh, structure of pawns so that's helpful i brought back the bishop on g6 he takes with the knight i had a couple of options to take from h h7 or f7 i went with f7 the idea being opening up the f5 uh sorry for i think trackpad messed it up uh, we'll go back yeah i took on with the f file f7 the idea being opening up the f file always helpful in attacking because uh, h5 could have been helpful if i am not castling i wanted to play aggressive from here now and then he played f4 i played rook to c8 he gets to push the bishop backwards by playing a3 of course i can bring back but if i bring back the bishop he will probably uh, play b4 here and then i have again to retrieve my bishop uh, of course if i bring on the c7 it's, it blocks my rooks uh, uh, file as well so i have to bring it to b6 so i didn't want him to develop on my moves basically so i bring back the bishop on d6 he develops the bishop uh, now finally on d2 his dark square bishop came out very late in the picture that's sort of an advantage with the london system if you're playing your dark square bishop gets developed first so always helpful uh, I have explained the London system in one of my previous videos. I will just place the link as well so that you can check that out. Now I played knight to e7. He f uh, tries to block the open file by placing bishop on c3. Always now this bishop is going to either diagonal, but for that he has to break the center so that his pawn gets dislodged from here. And that's when his attack would be helpful. I played knight to f5, trying to attack. Uh, on e3 and yep he played the uh, i think that, that was the best move uh, yes computer suggesting that you can place the rook on the e file always helpful but yeah that was a tricky move i would say uh, what he played because his idea was simple if i now take on the pawn he can take and after i have to now move the king or the option he gets to win my knight as well and this way he's taking a lot of advantage in the game so i think i was really impressed with this move uh, really well played so i saw that uh, and i played queen to f6 here he plays rook uh, rook from a to e1 and now i try to kick the queen away but yeah that puts my knight on sort of an inactive square he now goes back to d1 i bring back the queen on e7 and he tries to break the center open i capture the pawn he takes with the rook here I played knight to f5. Uh, yes, I was thinking that he can double up the rooks now. That could have been a very nice move from his side, but rather he chose to play pawn d5. That gives opens up the diagonal for the bishop and queen. So I give him a check first. Uh, he moves away. And now I got a square. So I just moved my queen also away from the threat because if I don't, probably he can capture on the pawn with his rook. Uh, and that puts a lot of pressure on the queen so i first move the queen away he takes with the rook here and now i play uh, knight to e3 and he takes and uh, that was probably the option remaining for him i take back with the bishop uh, computer suggesting that yep his pawn is stronger and white is having a slight advantage so far now he plays uh, rook to e1 the idea being uh, kicking the bishop away from there i bring back the bishop on the c file 
uh, he brings now the bishop on e5. I place the rook in front of it so it doesn't move. He plays pawn to d6. And here I played the rook. My, I probably just, I'll be honest, I missed the bishop diagonal. Uh, but uh, more, that was not a threat. Actually, the threat was queen uh, to a4. And then probably I have to maneuver my pieces in a smarter way here. Uh, otherwise, I'm, it can be very tricky. So he rather chose to just take the rook. And that was the blunder of the game. Uh, and I just take with the queen, and that's made in like two from here at max because if he can place his queen in between, then I can take on the queen and then the rook final piece that can come in between. The two diagonals are blocked to which the king can go. So that's made. I hope you like the video. Uh, something to be learned from it. Um, and please keep watching and sharing and uh, enjoy the videos. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.